Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to export everything from Flow into Blender to start to create the scene that we've got on the screen right now. This is working with exports from Flow and from Dice Studio for the avatar. So this video is going to focus mainly on the export process from Flow into Blender so that we can start to get something uh, that looks like this as a result. So if I go straight into um, Flow at this point, this is the Clo file that I've created in the video series before, so I'll link that down below for you guys to be able to create this jacket, the material, and everything everything here. The last video I did was about creating the uh, poses in Daz. So now we've got our character in a custom pose with clothing that we've made. The next step is to export everything out of Clo and bring it all into Blender, and I'll explain that process right now. The first thing we want to check, though, before we do anything is the UV layout. And this is also explained in another video that I've done, so I'll, I'll link that as well for you guys to, to see. But basically, we just want to lay out all the pieces in tiles in a logical way. Nothing should overlap. The pieces shouldn't be overlapping each other. They should have space around them. They shouldn't be overlapping from one tile to another. And the main thing to remember is if we have one fabric, so for an example here, this patterned fabric, these should all be scaled in the same way. Um, they shouldn't be... We shouldn't have one piece for you know for example bigger like this they should all be scaled in the same way and it should be the same for each material so all of these rib pieces here is the collar and the cuff rib pieces they are all scaled in the same proportion um just for when you're working in other texturing programs and things like that you want the resolutions to be the same so this gives us the the best layout and that is the one thing that you need to remember so when we've got the UV set out in a good way, we can start to export from this. So if we go to File, Export, and then go to OBJ, um, I'm going to export into this folder, and I'm just going to call this Jacket01, and click Save, and then we'll have this export window. And there's a few things we need to check here before we go into Blender. And the first thing is that we want to uncheck the Select All Avatars um, box, because we want to bring the avatar from a different place not from Clo. We want to then select all the graphics and trims so that the the graphic badge that we've got and the metal trims all come with the export as well. Um, the next option is thick, thin, and weld and unweld. So thin, you have the option to weld or unweld the geometry, and thick, you have only unweld as, as an option. That's fine, I'm going to explain the difference between these things now. The next thing is um, unified, unified UV coordinates, and that's basically taking this information in with the export. So that if we apply new materials to this, the, the pieces are going to be laid out in the same way. If this is not selected, we're not going to take this UV information, but we need to have this selected so it's going to lay out the UV tiles for us as well. We're going to export the materials at a different points, so you don't need to worry about this resolution, the image size or anything here. You can leave all of this unchecked. The scale you want to set to meters because in Blender we're working in a meter scale. If you're going into DAS, you would set this to centimeters, which is DAS Studio by default, but you want to change this to meters. Set this to 100%, don't change that. And then everything is good to go. So you click OK, and then you can export your, um, your geometry. The difference between them is, if I show you here in this Blender file, I've exported the same jacket in, in all three different possible ways that we can do it. So we have thin unwelded here. Thin, welded, and thick. And there's a, a slight definition of detail difference mainly between thick and thin. And that's, as you see around the edges of this pocket flap here, this, the edges of the rib and the edges of the zip, there's a slight definition. There's, there's a thick edge, basically. Whereas on the thin exports, there is not. This thick edge is not there. It's quite flat and it's quite thin. There's a reason for this. One uses a lot less geometry than the other. As you can imagine, this thick one has a lot more faces to cover than this thin one. If we look at this in render view, they're basically all the same from, from afar. If we start to get close, you, you can obviously see the, the difference in detail around the edges of the pocket, like I said before. But they all get, take the materials quite well. Everything gets projected quite well onto each of them. There's not too much difference. The... The main difference is in how the geometry is all connected. So if I start with the one in the center, the, the welded one, this is thin welded, and I'm going to go into object mode up here, from object mode into edit mode, and I can start to select different pattern pieces here. So if I press L on my keyboard, 
with my mouse over a pattern piece, I've got this set to UV. So if I go back to Clow, each one of these is a UV island, we call them, and each island I can select in Blender by using this link to select. So I'm selecting each UV island based on the, the UV layers that we've set here. So I can go around and select all these different pattern pieces. Um, I can click away and it will deselect everything. But the main thing I want to show is that if I press L here, if I press seam, actually, it will select everything connected to it by a seam. So all these things are seamed together, so we're selecting the whole geometry. But again, if I turn this back to UV, it will select just the UV island of this color. If I press G on the keyboard to grab this and move it, and I just move it up, you see that this is all still connected. And this is basically the stitching that we set up inside the 3 d This is the stitching connecting these edges together. It's the geometry that's created. Um, this can be useful for different things, but it depends what your usage is. If I look at, if I undo this, and then I look at the um, unwelded one, and I do the same thing, I go to edit mode, and I select with the L key this collar, and I press G to grab it, and I move it up. There's no stretching, because these are not connected, it's not welded, it's not stitched. It's just, each pattern piece is just being, you know, export is in the correct position, but they're not welded together again this can be useful for different things depending on what you're doing if you're texturing if you're creating you know game animation characters like it depends what you're producing what we're going to look at for this is the well the the thick one and like i said this is only available as an unwelded option if you go to so again if you choose thick it will lock to unweld and i'll show you why that is if i select the th thick object and I go to edit mode you can see now for example if I zoom right in on this pocket here I have pressing L again to select the UV island you have a front to the pocket and you have an edge to the pocket and you have a back to the pocket so this is the same for the collar so there's a lot more pieces created now so if I go up here to the collar I've got inside piece, I've even got an outside piece, and then I've got several edge pieces that are again all disconnected from each other, but they're creating this effect of thickness, but there's a lot more faces involved. For here we've got one piece of geometry and here we've got three. So if you look at this in terms of file size, I'm just going to undo this to go back. Um, Go to the overlays panel up here, drop this menu down to take a look and activate the statistics option and you'll see the number of triangles in the scene. Um, the more triangles, the more we need to render, the more time, the less triangles, the quicker it's going to run. Um, looking at just one of these exports, so the the thin export, this is 159,000 triangles, which isn't bad, but it's, you know, it's not small. If you look at the thick one, this is 423,000. It's nearly 424,000. So this is more than twice the size for quite a similar definition in the end, depending on what your usage is and how you're looking at this. Like I said, if when we see this rendered, the textures look fine either way. Um, it depends on your usage. What we're going to do is focus with the thick one because it's got all the edges and the, the details that we want to work with. If I was going to rig this to a character to play inside a game engine, for example, I'd probably use the welded one. And if I was going to texture this in detail inside Substance Paint, I might use the thin unwelded one because it's going to run quicker than taking the thick one. So that's my quick explanation of the difference between these exports. And what we want to do is go back here, choose thick, and export this whole thing with the settings we said before as a thick export. So click OK. That will export as thick. The next thing that we're going to do is create um, a shape key. So I'll, again, I'll quickly explain what this is. Uh, here I have the jacket open and the jacket closed, and I can create a connection between these two inside Blender. So if I select this jacket here and I look, I have look one open on the right side, this shape key here, under shape keys. And this is set to one because one is completely open. If I set this to zero, it will close. And if I set this to 0 0.5, it will go somewhere in between those two. Um, and 
we can export multiple poses of the garment from Clo. As long as we don't change the stitching or the geometry or any of the details in this garment, we leave everything as it is. We can create these shape keys in order to repose our garment as we want. So now I'm quickly just going to um, simulate this jacket open. And then we're going to export this one more time as a shape key to work with inside Blender. One thing to note about this, if I look at this zip, for example, I don't have any stitching connecting the edges of my zip because if I change the stitching, it might change the geometry and therefore the shape key won't work based on one post to the next post. So make sure that when you go from one post to another, you're not changing the stitching, you're not changing internal lines, you're not adding and removing trims, you're not adding and removing top stitching. Don't do anything that could change the geometry of this. Don't change the particle distance. Keep everything in the exact same settings as it's in now, and then the shape keys are guaranteed to work. If you change any settings or you change any parameters in Clo too much, you'll change the geometry and then the shape keys won't work. So just a quick note before you make any changes from one post to the next. So now the jacket is posed open, we can export this as a, a shape key to use inside uh, Blender alongside our other export. So again, I'm going to go to File, Export, go to OBJ. I'm going to call this Jacket 1 Open. I already have one here, I'm just going to over, overwrite this one. Deselect, select all avatars. Again, make sure you've got select all patterns, select, select all graphics and trims. The same settings we used before, Univer UV coordinates, the same thick setting that we had before. Everything set to meters and then press OK. And this will now export our second pose as, a, as an OBJ as well. We're going to go now into Blender. And I will show you how to set up these shape keys. So if we go to File, I'm just going to delete this cube here, press X to delete it, go to File, Import, and then go to OBJ at the top. If I look in my Exports folder and I select both the Jacket 1 OBJ and Jacket 1 OBJ Open, um, import both of these files, take a second and they should both appear, zoom in and take a look. Select the Open Jacket and just press G to grab it and you can move it around with G and then press X to snap to the X axis and just place it next to our other one. So to create the relationship between these as the, the shape key, like the morph that I explained is to select the first one, come down here on the right side and select this green triangle. Um, go to the shape keys here. We have vertex groups and shape keys in this parameters window here and click plus next to the shape keys option. And this will create a basis. And that means now this is our main shape, the one in the middle, and this is our the shape that we're going to use to create a key for. So select the one that we want to create the key for, press shift and then select our main shape and we'll see the basis appear again. Come down here to the arrow, drop this menu down and click join as shapes. And if everything's set up correctly, you should get a jacket one open as a shape key visible in your shape key editor on the side now. So if I select my main geometry, and I enter into here instead of zero as the default value, I set this to one. My jacket will pop open like the one on the other side. If I then set this to 0 0.5, it will be halfway between open and closed. And now I can delete, I'll press X and delete my other object. I don't need that anymore. I just need this one. And again, I can set this to one to have it open. So now you know how to export different poses outside of Clo into Blender, how to transition from one garment pose to another garment pose inside of Blender itself. We set up all the UV tiles and in the next video we're going to look at how to set up the materials so that we can see uh, see how to export the materials out of Clo and bring everything into Blender. So in the next video I'll see you guys there. I hope this was useful and yeah keep keep working.